Welcome to You, Me, and the Dogs, the podcast where we explore the wonderful world of pet ownership. Join me every Wednesday as my guests and I share personal stories, insights, and experiences, of course, with dogs. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, then you. <laughs> good, good. How about you introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, of course. So my name is Amandine. I'm French. I've been living in the U.S. for six years now, and I am originally from Normandy, which is where I'm going back for the next couple of months, and then I'll see what I do. I work in marketing, and I adopted Tuna four years ago in Miami in the local shelter because I always wanted a dog, and it was my my thing to... I wanted to go and get a rescue dog and, like, and take someone in, and I've always liked... Dairy, bully, pit bull types of dogs, and that's how I got Tuna. It was not meant to be because when I went to the shelter, the dog that I wanted was already adopted by someone else, and someone was supposed to come pick up Tuna, and they never came, and that's how I got her. <laughs> oh my God. It was a happy mis like happy mistake and stuff, but yeah, this is that were our story and we've been enjoying our time in Miami but now we're moving on to another yeah. adventure and there was no there was no way for me to leave her here so I really explored a lot of options for a year like I thought maybe a piece of land was connecting somewhere <laughs> where I could drive <laughs> there's none so I'm very excited to have you because you spoke about your journey in the first episode of this season because uh -huh. I traveled to New York and it, you know, traveling with your dog is not easy. Any way you, tr you travel, it's very mm -hmm. difficult. And so I made a reference to your account mm -hmm. because you were doing a lot of practices with Tuna mm -hmm. regarding, you know, making sure that she's comfortable in the crate, mm -hmm. um, even your frustration, you know, like you talked about it and I don't know, I was like, this is so relatable. So yeah. <laughs> thank you for doing this. <laughs> My pleasure. No, I've been doing a lot of research for over a year now because I've been thinking about doing this. And um, I'm French, so we complain very easily. So that's not a problem for me to share the reality of it because I've been looking at other accounts of people who do travel with their dogs. And um, I'm not saying it's wrong, but you know, they have a way to make a reel that lasts one minute, one minute and 30. And hey, about the paper and we got on the plane and it was cute and this and that and it's it's not the whole thing it's not the reality of the, right. of the process and on Facebook I've been on different groups with people who do travel with their dogs a lot and everybody related to me with the stress the amount of paperwork to do um, I even have a friend who lived in Canada and she traveled to France with a small dog in cabin and even with her small dog it was an issue because the ears were touching a little bit the bag in cabin so you hear of everything right <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, I can totally share the, the reality and the full picture of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to know just real quick, like, how do you feel about dog ownership here in Miami? I feel it's difficult because a lot of people, I feel, don't really take the responsibility of what it really means. That, you know, they don't anticipate the cost, the housing situation. They don't anticipate uh, pet sitting options and just, you know, basically... Just picking up poop, poop up. <laughs> exactly. Like, I, I mean, I, I live in North Bay Village. I've never seen so much dog poop on the floor when there's literally three bags everywhere. Yeah. So I, I feel like there is a, a real lack of awareness of what it is to have a dog but also dog well-being in general. For example, I've been also very hurt a couple of times going to the vet and you have to actually explain to the vet, can you not be rough with my dog when you manipulate her? Uh -huh. I understand the vets are a lot under a lot of pressure because they have clients back to back, they have to pay for their staff and everything, but when the dog has to be manipulated and like you hold her key like this, it's, it's not gonna go well. Right. So, um, it's my first dog and I thought that dog ownership would be difficult because I would have to adjust my daily 
in. And the most difficult part is actually to interact with other humans. I having <laughs> So yeah, that was a, a surprise. Yeah, a bad one, but you learn along right. the way. <laughs> no, I, I really, <laughs> when I saw you post on your story, like they closed the only green space that there was. Yeah. yeah. That. It's like they don't think. <laughs> no, no, they don't, and it's it's especially not making sense in an area like this where there's seven buildings, and seven of them are pet friendly. Mm -hmm. So what what's the point? We're supposed to walk our dogs on burning concrete during six months of the year, and you and I understand that the city closed that space because they were getting desperate because some people were not picking up the poop. Mm -hmm. But that's also part of the game. Some people don't respect the rules, some others do. I mean, it makes it makes no sense, but it, they did it. So you have to we have to get along with it. So now like every dog is going to poo and peep on private gardens, which make owners upset, which is understandable, but we deal with the options we have. Tell me what are you expecting? Like cuz you're leaving Wednesday. So yes. what <laughs> what have you been preparing for? I've been preparing my stuff to have a meltdown when they take right. tuna to go cargo. But I've had to do a lot of anticipation of stress for her, which is why we did a lot of crate training. I had to anticipate also comfort on the crates. At the beginning, I thought I was going to let her harness on her. And my dog trainer in France recommended me more to give her a collar because it's more comfortable if she wants to move. I've seen feedbacks of people saying that the air tag of iPhone was not working super well. So I got her a GPS from Tractive to be able to track her around. I bought her an orthopedic bed to put on the crate. And then I saw that it's not allowed. They can just have one, one cover. So I tried to anticipate as much as I could her discomfort. I also got her um, a rescue remedy, which is an, an essential oil that you want them to relax as much as possible. And the most scary thing for me having a terrier type was maybe she was not going to be able to get on the plane. So I had to make sure with the vet that all the paperwork was up to date and you know that nothing was failing that everything was flawless and because she's a terrier type I had to do a special examination with a vet who basically made me measure her face her shoulders like her whole body and I got a paper certifying that she's not a purebred staff or purebred people and so legally yeah. <laughs> I cannot be stopped from getting on the plane with her but just that in itself was a process of three months to find a vet to do that and it's an extra cost right so that, that was that was there was a lot of stress of anticipating all of the details and so now i'm i'm relieved because everything is prepped right <laughs> and we just need to go through the flight and i think the worst part is done as all the preparation before because then once she's in the crate it's rescue remedy she's gonna be able to relax I'm going to sleep because it's a night flight and then when we arrive, we, as soon as I get her, she's out of the crate and that's it. But I actually think that the preparation of the trip is worth it. When it comes to the breed, because yeah. I was going to ask you that, yeah. because you're going to France and I know that they have restrictions. Exactly. So mm -hmm. have you spoken to someone in regards to that or how does that go about in France? I had to. I had to because of the laws that they have in France. They have, um, it's it's not a ban like they have in the UK now, but France created a law a couple of years ago that is basically categorizing dogs into three categories. The first one being super dangerous pit bulls. And if you have a dog category one, they have to be muzzled, you need to have a permit, and these dogs are not allowed to be imported. So if Tuna would have not had this this certificate that I have, she would not have been able to come to France with me because the importation is prohibited. And then category two and three, it's mixed dogs, mixed staff, staffies, rottweilers, 
and these are authorized in France and you can import and export them, but the airlines do not accept them. Oh. So, and so that's why, that's what the, that's what the problems I had. If you are already in the UK and in Europe, you can yeah. take a boat, you can take a car, but flying from Canada or the US to Europe with a dog of category two or three, you can't because no airline accept them. And so the option that you have is to transport them by uh, freight. So they're, they're basically, you have to pay thousands of dollars to have a special company taking them. And for example, pit bulls, they have to be iron cage, just in case, it's very dangerous. So that's why I took a year to prepare it because I knew I needed to have her certified not category one dog because it, she would not have been able to get on the plane. And now that I have this paper from the vet, legally the airline cannot stop me from onboarding with her. And that's actually on the waiver that they make I fill out before you get on the plane. There is a line that says, if your dog looks like a category mm -hmm. one, two or three, you need to have the certification from the vet that it's not one of these dogs. And that was the hard part because I thought, if I cannot have this one, then I cannot go back to France because I'm not leaving without her. Right, right. But that's, and that's why also it was very stressful because the laws are so different. With a pit bull, you can fly in the US. You can. If your pit bull or pit bull type is certified service dog, or if you fly with a JSX, you can. But the laws are very different from the US to Europe. And yeah. I actually had a conversation like this a year ago with women um, who works in the American Association that, you know, certifies service mm -hmm. dog. And she told me, like, literally, today, $400 will have her certified service dog and nobody can stop taking her in cabin on a plane. This is not true. It's not true at all. And this is, and this is why also it takes a lot of stress and time to research. I went to every website of every time. When you take a close look at it, on every pet policy travel, it's written black on white. Even if you have a service dog, if it's not behaving properly, yeah. it can be denied the flight. And so that's why I thought I need to say this because I see too much people online saying, oh, get it certified service dog. That will not be a yeah. guarantee that you can fly. And a service no, dog know. is for someone with a, a disability. Issue, right. A disability. And so if your dog is not certified, don't, don't put that on yourself and on your dog because right. it means that you prepare and then you go to the airport and you can't board. It's a mess. It creates them that is unspeakable. And that's the thing. In the US, you can fly with your pet in cabin. To Europe, absolutely not. So my dog is a service animal. Yeah, exactly. I did several years of training. He tasks, different mm -hmm. tasks. Even with that, I am stressed out because yeah. You know, you need to be there two hours before. Yeah. The, you know, sometimes you're stressed and, and mm -hmm. they pick up on that. And so yeah. oh. I want him to have a good experience at the same yeah. time I'm stressed. <laughs> it is. And that, uh, the thing also is that that's why also I've been really stressed out by the process is that it took a lot of work and research to have clear answers mm -hmm. on what I could do and cannot do. And even like that, there are things that are not clear. As you mentioned, you know, when we get to the airport, what do we do? I'm traveling with Air France and I called them in advance and I told them that when I go to the airport, when you take my dog, does she has to be already in the crate and you take her right away? Or do I come, I register her and then I can take her out to pee one more time? And they told me, we cannot tell you in advance because it's going to depend of the traffic that we have in the airport that day at that time that's what i've been told so what i'm going to do is go three hours in advance and i'm gonna have her pee and take her rescue remedy take her in the crate and we're gonna go like she has no time to go pee again because if we have the time we'll go out one more time but maybe we won't and so she's gonna have to be ready so this is also part of the process 
there are some things that you can know for sure. You know the paperwork you have to take care of. You know what time you have to get there. But then you have no guarantee of what's going to happen. And to me, it's also very stressful that you lose cargo because I've heard as many stories of people telling me it's going to go fine. I do it with my dog all the time. And then you have people telling you my dog died when he went cargo because he was so stressed. So you do your best to get prepared and right. then it's not in your hands. But yeah, the, the preparation with the airport, it's not easy. So the best thing that you can do is to have little treats, uh, do something for you that is going to uh -huh. relax you too. And if you have the occasion, because not everybody has the time to do that, and because I don't have a car, I wasn't able with Tuna, it's good if you can take your dog to the airport before to get him yeah. a bit used to the sound and, and the moves and everything. But not everybody has the time to, to go to right. the airport, pay for parking, take the dog five minutes, then 10, then 15. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, most of people that I see traveling with small dogs, then they never did any of that. And no, you can exactly. see it. When yep. you see the dog body language in the airport, you see that they're freaking out and people are just dragging them like they're carry-ons. And so I, I think you do already a big part of a good job when you are aware in advance and you are preparing yourself because you're already doing most of what people don't do. So. Exactly. No, and then what, because I've spoken about this, what it does like, you know, to the person next to you yeah. Yeah. and the perception uh, that they get. Yeah. And so that yeah. continues, you know, that then generalizes mm -hmm. to be like, well, we don't want a dog in the plane. Exactly. That's also something that is hard to fight because of course the dog is going to be nervous and is going to bark because it's alive mm -hmm. and it's allowed to express its anger. And uh, when you're on a flight, uh, people scream, people bother you, they kick your seat, they, they take the seat down like they Last time I went to France, I had two kids next to me screaming oh. for three hours nonstop. And nobody's saying, oh, we should have flights without kids. Uh -huh. you, you just have to deal with it. So, and that's something that I have not succeeded to do. I don't have a, a tough skin enough. When people say things like that, it still gets to me. Right. But, you know, even when you do the, the best of what you can do and you follow the rules, there's always going to be someone complaining. So, right. How is dog ownership considered in France? It is, um, I, I feel like in France, people have more awareness of what it is to, to have a dog. People are also, I think, a bit more responsible because there's no not so much problem of housing. Uh, to find an apartment with the uh, with dog but france actually has a similar problem with people dropping dogs at the shelter the same type of behavior oh, i get the dog because it's uh -huh. cute but in terms of traveling it's way easier because we have trains we have cars and with the cars you can go to just so many countries right. close by the border and i've talked to a lot of people who go to the uk to scotland with the boats because in Normandy you can just it's super easy traveling is made more easy and also in france they are way more advanced in terms of welfare uh, they don't use coercitive um yeah not as much coercitive method as here Crown colors now are pretty yeah. different. You can't even buy them. You can't train dog yeah. with that. Um, or I think the e collars too, right? I yeah, think both. That, yeah, both of them. And that that law passed last year. So there's still a lot of people, especially male, who are like, no, you have to be tough and dominant. But there's more positive tools and processes and people advocating for it. There's also more holistic uh, approaches to their health way more people know about raw diets there's um animal osteopaths so yeah there's more a little bit more awareness on this but at the same time kind of also kind of same stupid ownership reactions um <laughs> yeah but but in france there's also the law is protecting more the animal because a couple of years ago they were still like in the u.s considered just objects and private property mm -hmm. And I think five or seven years ago, the law changed, and now they're considered living beings with emotions. Right. 
And so we've had many cases of people going to jail because they neglected a dog or, or a cat. But there's still also a long, long way to go. Yeah, but that's, I, a, that's a step. That's a step a that, that we need, that Miami needs, well, the United States needs, because it is a, a kind of a global problem. It's a global issue. And also, the, even though the costs are also expensive in France for vet uh, fees, it's not as high as here. So uh, people also do more and more follow up so they go to the vets more because it doesn't cut their salaries in half if there, if there is an issue. Right. Which is here, it's going up like really, really fast. And I right. talked about it on my accounts just for the appointment that we had for the for health certificates, it was a $400 appointment. That's more than my food budget. Mm -hmm. So uh, here, there's part of people who are irresponsible. But there's also people who don't take care of their dog properly because they can't afford it because it's too much. The medication is too much because the vet office visit is too much. And that's that's a whole system to change. But I don't think it's going to be changed because they make money with it. Yeah, exactly. So it's also hard to talk to people about being responsible and spay your dog and have your dog up to date with vaccines and stuff when people are already struggling to make in meat. That's kind of hard. But also here in Miami, I mean, they banned pit bull for a couple of years, but people can have huskies. Mm -hmm. Huskies have no fucking way to be in Florida. It's too hot. Right. They're, they're dogs that are in the snow and you have them here. Yeah. But make it make sense. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with they see the dog and they're like, it's so cute. I want it. Yeah. That's and the problem. Or like um, with Malinois, there's a lot of Malinois that are in the shelter. I mean, I just went to the shelter the other day. Yeah, it is. Um, it's a it's a huge issue uh, again. Like, and that's why I'm talking about awareness, because people don't know and they don't understand what is a dog, and it comes yep. from also very just basic learning how to read the body language. When I adopted Tuna, she was social. She got attacked three times at the dog park, so now she's super, super selective. And people scare me because they approach me with their dogs and they see her tail going like this. I'm like, oh, she's happy. She wants to play. I'm like, she's nervous. She's nervous. Mm -hmm. the, the tail wagging is not only a sign of happiness. Right. You have it dog. depends on how it wags. Exactly. <laughs> and if you see that my dog is just super stiff like this, it's not relaxed. It's not good. And face to face meeting. It's human, it's not dog, uh -huh. but because people are busy and they have to work and they don't have as much yeah, time it's as the, they could. It's a horse. Exactly. <laughs> like, let's just do as simple as I can, as, as fast as I can. And that's also that, that that's bad because it damages the relationship with the dog and we, we misunderstand them and then we mistreat them because we don't understand them. It's a lack of, of knowledge. So it's um, it's an issue, and it's I think it's going to take a lot of time because, as you say, people want a dog because it's cute and I can cuddle it, but it's hard because you have to learn to live with another species that doesn't speak your language. So correct, you have to be actually super proactive with learning how how they function and and what they need and. Uh, for example, I, I listened yesterday to my dog trainer in France and she was saying, do you guys know how to check the vitals of your dog? Mm -hmm. And I realized yeah. she's four years old. I don't even know how to check her temperature. Yeah. But you would know if you had a baby. So, right. I no, yeah. <laughs> the stat in the United States is like 90% don't know how to do no. any of that. No. So I I wrote a book and everything about it. And I, I think you could see in my videos, I, I do it because it's so important. Yeah. Like that's, if you're, if you can't afford vet care, at least do that. And yeah. you have, what's your dog's average? Yeah. And you, you know more about your dog exactly. that way. Plus, if you do more prevention, sometimes you can actually mm -hmm. reduce the vet cost because you're correct on, on them earlier and so you can stop something before it escalates so yeah, there, yeah. there's a lot of of changes to do and it feels very overwhelming and i've been i've been a volunteer in a shelter for several months 
and I had to stop because I, I felt overwhelmed and it's um, and it's tough to see how you struggle to place one dog and then the next week you come back and you have 20 more that arrive. It's I mean people who work in shelter year long deserve yeah a bless them a because... <laughs> and, and blessing and vacation and and more reclusive because it, it touch a toll on your on your mind mental mental health yeah. yeah it is a lot well i thank you so much um <laughs> i'm excited to talk to you in a couple of months yeah. and see how everything goes and your experience i will i will we can have another talk when we land and i'll explain how the flight went and how the steps went and then we can do like several feedbacks to see yeah to see how it goes and then when i'll be in europe with her i will be traveling to other places and so on. okay <laughs> yeah <No> series <laughs> yeah no. no so people could follow you at tuna the brindle yeah. on instagram and i highly recommend it because you know, you really do a good job in explaining both in French and English. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun doing it in two in two languages. And uh, yeah, I would just invite people to take more time. Just enjoy your dog also the time that you have them. And uh, we're so absorbed with work and screens and just mm -hmm. sometimes just 10 minutes away from your phone and you enjoy your dog and you you watch them watch and it feels it, it also strengthens your bond because when you get a dog it's because you want that relationship so we hope you enjoyed this episode if you want to know more about our guests read the show notes down below and of course join us next wednesday for another possum episode of yumi and the dogs bye